So I think it's 7 o'clock, so I'm going to call the meeting to order. And uh, on for planning board, the first item on the agenda is a uh, major site plan review. And Ralph A. Phipps, very, very ably uh, represented by Attorney Chris Weiskill. We can't call you Chris. You call me John. Please. All right, so please, uh, don't look over my shoulder to see that. Can you spell your last name for me? W-Y-S-K-I. Briefly, Ralph has a 12 acre lot on Turgeon uh, Way uh, for some 10 years or so and longer. He has been conducting Phipps landscaping business out there. It's last fall, we confirmed through Tom, and I visited his board in October, he confirmed that was a permitted agricultural use. See right back. Um, so we're here for site review. Because we're going to add a structure to that existing legal use. That's all we're doing. Um, so this plan is submitted, drawn by Adam Bogg of Atlantic Survey. Uh, the property uh, with its topography, wetlands, it was depicted, and it was uh, done for by civil consultants at the time. Uh, Turgeon Way was subdivided into subdivision lot. You know, the rear section is not done. That was in October. Since I tried to abbreviate my waiver request so as not to go through your design standards and set thing by thing. There's a lot of precise design requirements to be met here. And basically what I've asked is for uh, Ralph to be excused from any design standards that would require him to submit anything in addition to what we have, primarily because we think we have plenty here to make the decision. Nothing's changing this back here is a lot significant to show the topography wetlands in the existing area, the topography in the, in the vicinity of the building to be added and the septic behind that will be changed by Adam Fogg in his septic approval plan, which was also submitted, you know, shows how the topography will change. This is a uh, septic system that has been approved by the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services. Um, so those the contoured lines are brought forward onto the site. Plan. So um, to request the waivers, you have uh, in your ordinance in the provisions I've cited, um, Article Roman Four, Section One. My letter uh, lists <coughs> to be met. I have generally described them. Here present listening to this, uh, we need to establish that granting a waiver to be excused from showing uh, other standards will not be detrimental to the public health, safety, and general welfare. Reading it is in the opinion of the board upon a majority vote, after motion goes in second, not injurious to other parties, but it will not have the effect of nullifying the intent and purpose of the zoning ordinance and subdivision regulation chapters that we are uh, designing to. That strict compliance with the regulations would cause hardship to the applicant because of the physical characteristics of the land. And that by granting the waiver, you would find that there's a substantial public benefit. Um, no one's going to be harmed. I'm not requiring um, the design standards I summarily addressed in the balance of my letter to do, a, for instance, a traffic impact study, a high intensity soil survey. 
uh, to map the topography uh, or to prove there are no wetlands in this hillside area because nothing's being changed or touched out there. The emphasis of the site plan is right here. We showed you the information that's there. So um, it's not detrimental to the public health, safety, and welfare of the community that the design standards seek to, to protect. Not injuring anybody by not doing that work, not doing a lighting plan, uh, or requesting just because the nature of the uh, agricultural use landscaping is commercial in nature. Uh, commercial in nature, for example, your site design requirements require sidewalks, paved driveways, and things like that. We have to be excused from that. This is a gravel way that's that's preferable for the site. It's better, you know, for drainage and all that. There's no sense to, to do all those things. Um, Physical characteristic of the land is its sheer size. Given all we're doing is adding a house, um, its size to require all those additional things that aren't necessary for you to properly consider these things uh, is a hardship unique to the land. And I think there's a substantial benefit in granting the waiver because hopefully it will result in the um, approval and the building of this structure that will accommodate housing, appropriate your citizens, and clean up the business use. Uh, one of the things. I did in submitting the application was I submitted copies of cell phone pictures I took when I was on the site with Ralph and I prepared so they made sense to you, a bit of a photo log. It's a reduced photocopy of this plan with numbered, circled numbers corresponding to my labeling of the photographs submitted to those numbers with an arrow as if you were standing on the site in a circle facing the direction I faced when the picture was taken. So you're looking at a uh, map that I submitted that's the tax map uh, that we color-coded just to help the town verify that um, we, in fact, included all the abutters in our notice provisions. Uh, we, we had to compile a list anyway, so it's probably the list to make sure we called up everybody. So we figured to show you how we did it. We just color-coded the map and picked everyone in. Richard, so this is a... I'm uh, sorry to interrupt you, but I think there's only one copy of pictures. I <laughs> Really? Um, so let me, I mean, if, if it'll help, let me go through them. I'll hold them up because I have a copy. And I'll reference those. So, so what I did was just to, two reasons for my doing the photo is to, you know, demonstrate that there's, these are the existing conditions on site and help you understand it. And also, since we're saying we're not changing anything about it and assuming you will approve this plan, I'm creating a record of sorts to say, this is what's there now, so that a future board doesn't come in and say, well, the use has been expanded improperly without a permit and stuff like that. Ralph and I talked about it, so that's fine. So picture number one is as if I'm standing in Ralph's driveway looking at the cul-de-sac, turning away. You know, I'm just depicting how there's a gravel driveway. Picture two, I'm walking up the driveway, and I'm looking in the vicinity of the well. And you can see um, wells out in this little structure out there. Um, picture three is I'm coming up the driveway and just showing you how the, the gravel driveway exists. It forks over to Mr. Armand Turgeon's property, these cement block structures that are on site. Ralph, those are actually on Armand's property, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, Ralph uses them and stuff, but um, they're not on site. But the driveway comes close to that, so they're right over here. Um, and then the driveway continues going up into the primary site that Ralph uses, and up and beyond where this multi-barrier floor um, is being done, we'll get to in a minute. So four, just heading further up the driveway. So we have, I don't know, have members been to the site? Anybody? No? To the extent you haven't, you get a little bird's eye you know, driveway view now. Five on the log is taken just as I'm turning into the driveway into the area primary, primarily used now by Ralph in his landscaping business. And you can see that in, let me get a different um, pointer, this, this tree-lined area that Adam has shown shows the cleared area, and this is primarily all gravel. A few additional trees will be cut here to make uh, the septic system you know, the extra fill that will go in. So as you come into this gravel area, um, there's a wooden storage shed here, which is depicted on these photos. And just next to them are some other storage bins built out of temporary cement blocking. So you can put 
understand the term mulch and stuff. Ralph actually says some of the, um, let me get ahead of myself, I'll, I'll recap. Uh, photo number six is just a photograph. If I was in the middle of the driveway, you would still see this wooden shed on, on my left hand side. I'm looking back to the rear part of the site. Uh, and you can see Ralph's got a few box trailers uh, in here in the vicinity where his truck will be that he uses for storage now. A couple of those will be moved neatly over next to the wind structure and then the cement thing so we can have some additional storage. A lot of the other vehicles and a couple of, uh, some trailer that's there now that's intended to be removed and then the structure that will, you know, that will be built will accommodate storage for the landscaping business as well as his residence. So seven is just a view if I'm standing here looking back at that storage area. Eight, I'm way back in front of where the house would be, just to show the box trailer vehicle that's going to be moved. The trailers will now be over here. Nine, where am I nine? Oh, nine, I'm looking um, back this way. Um, so opposite that wooden storage and cement storage areas is just a hanging thing where you can hang a piece of equipment that you're on your truck, your sanders, or your phone is on. All that stuff will stay remain on site. Then on picture 10, I'm heading up the driveway. And I'm just showing the rest of the site. You can see the existing use. None of it's going to change. Um, we'll, uh, Ralph and his crew um, bring in stuff from, um, you know, materials from other uh, sites. And they, they churn this up and they make mulch. Um, there are piles out there. Um, and the sequence photos just take you through that back area. So that's that. The request for waivers, um, my copy of your design criteria are all marked up in pen. Um, I mean, why do we have to do this? So on pages three and four of my letter, I've just tried to summarily say there's really no need for this. So we're asking to be excused from high intensity soil surveys. That would be important to do if you're proposing a new type of use. Would it injure the land or whatever? This use has been ongoing, and the house is going to be on a gravel site anywhere, anyways. And the new septic is going to be built in an area that DES has already approved as being appropriate for the site. Um, you know, the driveway crosses the wetland in this area. There's a culvert that's been there for 10 years. Um, lighting, the only lighting that's going to be, it will be on the structure itself, mm -hmm. correct? So there's no separate lighting on the ground utilities required. Since the building process will have to go through an inspection or permitting process in the town, the lighting will have to go through an approval process there. No need to demonstrate it more clearly here, in, in my opinion. And um, a traffic impact analysis. The, the, the agricultural use you know, will be maintained. Traffic's not going to be changed, except the incremental increase of Ralph coming back and forth to his house, which is minimal this, you know, in a residential subdivision anyway. So there's no need to uh, do a complete traffic study to demonstrate that. Driveway, vehicular, and pedestrian access, there's no need to demark that on a plan and make absolutes because this is just a commercial that trucks come in, people park, they move them depending on what they're loading and offloading, <coughs> plenty of parking space. The plan shows how you can easily park four vehicles in this area. You have what, four or five trucks? Yes, four. And four. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's got plows that he puts down, employees come and go and then they leave at night. There's more than adequate area for parking, for snow loading, to move this thing. Um, the addition of the house not gonna not gonna change that. So I don't request that we have an absolute parking design because it's gonna be in flex daily as people move around anyway. Plenty of room for loading, snow removal, pedestrian circulation, I mean people just come to the site and leave the site and then come back Lighting, I address storm drainage. Um, we don't have a separate storm drainage plan because the septic has been approved for drainage there. Everything else is existing and works. You know, the house will have whatever drainage has been approved during the course of building plans and the site otherwise not changing. Um, utilities, you're just going to have your utilities brought in what, underground? Underground. Underground, and then it'll be a well connection to the structure. No other utilities besides that. Um, so landscaping, we don't have a landscaping plan because you know, this is out in the middle of a wooded area. I took a uh, 
aerial photography from Google Earth. I do have copies that you cut some down, so I don't have to look. This is too small. I'll wait till everyone has a copy and I'll pour it into it. So on this map, you can see the Turgeon Way that run, ends in a round circle, and you can see the dry, Ralph's driveway that comes in from that, and the two little white uh, uh, trailers that, that then there exist. I mean, the area in the vicinity of this house, is, the house will be right where those two box trailers are shown from this aerial view. Everything's surrounded by trees anyway, so it's a natural buffer. And then the large expensive, expanse of field where the mulching operations here and all that. I mean, there's no need for a separate landscaping design and buffer. Your design requirements, uh, you know, your design criteria and your site review regulations require that. You know, but admittedly, if I was doing an in-town lot and wanted to screen buffer, that would be much more important than out here on, on Turgeon Way. Um, patient and restrooms. Um, we have a porta potty on site now? Yes. Yeah, so the new structure is going to have restrooms for the work area as well as for the house. So that's an improvement. And you know, do we pick them? No, because they're internal to the structure and to part of the building. Um, solid waste recycling disposal. Um, the house will have a septic system. Everybody should take care of it in town like everybody else does. And the business, uh, right, not just town house, you do that. Do you have waste or? I have a dumpster there that pumps every week and that's it. And that'll continue, right? Yeah. Yep. There are no historic sites or structures on site in section 17 of design criteria. Water supply, we have a well on site, and it'll be hooked up to the house. So, <coughs> I entertain questions. Uh, I think the application is complete. If you found that way, I request that someone move to uh, make a motion to grant the waivers we seek so we don't have to submit anything else, that you approve that and approve the site plan. So, I'll be quiet for a moment. First, uh, if I could, uh, I'd like to ask our uh, very able technical advisor, Tom Clark, if you have any comments. Um, I have a few. One of the requirements in the existing site conditions, and I think you pointed to them, there are structures that are existing that will remain. Right. Uh, is there a reason they're not depicted? Because they're temporary in nature, except for the two wooden structures that I've chosen to try to depict by picture instead and set them on the plan because I was trying to get Adam to add those to those things. And, you know, we didn't. So I think between the two, uh, the board could make a finding that um, the two wind structures are going to stay. Stay. The cement structures, those are blocks well, that can be changed. Okay. I thought you said the cement things were on this detergent block. The two are when you first enter. But so let me show you in a photo. Which full of photo? Yeah. On his one. On his one. Six and seven, Tom. So oh, here's right, the structure. Right, right, right. It's gonna stay. I don't have it on the plan, you know. But you can say the structure shown in this picture of the cement things yeah, are gonna yeah. be there. These these things that are shown in picture seven, the cement block things, it can it can literally be moved at any time and rebuilt. And I agree, with you, but the wooden ones that are gonna stay, they're gonna remain part of the operation, right? Yeah. Added to a plan before it was finally signed as a condition, I suppose. You know, I was, I, I, they couldn't. Picture f number five is well, better picture okay. that too. Right. I guess it's up to the board to decide. I mean, that, that's Just staying, that's part of the operation. It seems to me it should be on the side. And, and there's a, so there's a wooden structure on the opposite side yeah. where they, in that too. I mean, that's going to stay, yeah. I mean, Adam there. had this computer, right? I mean, he can yep. put anything on that he wants. Yes. Up to the board, though. I mean, this, this wooden it's structure just sitting on these blocks. Block. Right. And we weren't really sure that, that it's going to stay. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay for the short term. It, it may be <coughs> eventually. But again, it's something that we can move around. Go I, yeah, I, I think it depends on how the board feels about it. I don't think it's a huge issue. I mean, it, it is part of the regulations that you have to indicate which structures are to be retained and which are to be removed. 
um, you know, the board understands what's going on and just the pictures in combination with the site plan is sufficient. Kevin, I, I, I noticed them too that they seem to be appearing on those Jersey barriers or whatever you want to call the concrete uh, blocks that they sit on. And those concrete blocks are simply set on the earth. There's no pad. Correct. I mean, those, and these posts themselves, those are not sunk into any sort of concrete. No, well, they're just, well. just dug in. So personally, I would have some leniency to the fact that because they are a non-attached structure, we have no permanent base. Yeah. And I think but I probably should have prefaced my whole comment with, I mean, the question may be why did Ralph have to do this is um, since the business has been around for so long, it's simply because of the building that he wants to put on it. He and the site review rigs, it's development of a non-residential nature, so it, it has to come to site review. So it is different, I think, in that it has been around for a long time. And there certainly are buildings there that have been used. And um, <coughs> if we, I mean, we, I think we have a, just a good idea, a good understanding of what's going to be removed. And, you know, I mean, the site's going to be cleared up. There's a lot of metal around there that Ralph's just going to clean up in okay. the process. It's I mean, that go. stuff's, a lot of that's going to go, yeah. and Ralph can speak to that. So the structures, yeah, I, you know, Adam, can you show them? And then Ralph say, you know, well, the cement things, we might move them. It temporary might add another one if we need it. So I'm thinking if, if it's shown, come on, the plan, it's sort of locked in, and what, do we have to come back and do another one? So it does a temporary nature. You know, the wooden one, yeah, it's more of a structure. You know, but it, it's it's not uh, so so I thought we can either add it to the plan or I think in your findings you, you can say that which was one of the reasons I tried to submit the photo log to yeah. show yeah. these are some existing these can stay yeah. and the nature of structures yeah. or you know the cement thing is going to get you know oh. changed so that you do have a record say yeah. like, well, where are these other six come from right. yeah. yeah I mean it's in the future boards I understand yeah. yep. no I, I don't disagree yeah, yeah. um. And we talked about the traffic. I understand. Where's the request? Oh, excuse me. Oh, can I, can I just interrupt you to follow up on the building oh, conversation? Right, sure. um, the wooden structure, um, and it looks like you have like two side by side, a bigger and a smaller one. Um, do you do you um, do you store salt? And does do either of those structures store salt? Um, I think it would be important to note that on the plan for stormwater because according to our stormwater permit, um, it's just the law that you know, salt has to be housed. It's a way to document that we've reviewed that and we are ensuring that the salt is housed. So you do, so, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. You yeah, you store salt. That's, that's, so you could specify. That's why, it's, that's why they build it there. Yeah. Salt. You could specify if you put like salt would be in the storage mm -hmm. structure. However the board wants to do it, I just think it's important to um, document the requirement that salt be housed. It looks like you're meeting that. Um, yeah, good point. How the board wants to do that, they can When we say document, do we mean as part of the approval, we add a condition that the salt, the salt be properly housed in accordance with the applicable stormwater provision? Yes, I'd say so. Now, before we move on, um, I want to ask if, Sue, do you have any questions about this issue or comments? I agree about, um, uh, you know, storing <coughs> salt. Yeah, it does sound like it should have. <coughs> Richard, mm -hmm. do you have any comments about the wooden structures and whether they should be shown in the plan or not? No, I don't, I don't think they need to be because I think they're, uh, they're in portable in nature. You can move them rather easily. Conveniently, uh, I do agree with the salt process, though. I, I think that should be on the open question or something. So, yeah. that. and John, let me ask you this: in terms of you know, not requiring the whole new the, the site plan be redrawn to show the two structures, if we don't require that, are there any implications if Mr. Phipps or a future landowner or property comes forward in the future and asks for expansion or whatever? Are there any implications from that? Well, I think what we would do is. I mean, we keep the whole thing as, a, as an approved site plan to include the photo log. And if anyone were to come, they would look through everything and see that. So I, I think if, if we uh, consider it complete as part of the, of the application, I don't think it needs to be. I think that's entirely at the board's discretion to 
have those little buildings put on there. Okay. Please continue with the next one. No, I think about that one. What um, what is that existing structure that was to say that barn? It's an it's existing barn. So is that as you drive in? It's on the left hand side. It's on the right. You can drive in. In front oh. of the well. Oh, okay. So it's the right there. You drive right, right yeah. close to it. So the one on the left is probably on this turf as well. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's not. Okay. That was clear. I want to okay. Um, I mean, there, there's only one building. The other yeah. things are cement. Jersey barriers that we move, you know, we need to store some gravel or some loam or something. Those things kind of, there's three or four of them, they, they just kind of get moved as we need to. In the winter time, we need the space and we might need gravel. So that we change them around a bit. But they're, they're, they're very uh, easily moved. Tom, if I can, in my photo too, of course, I was just trying to show the vicinity with who helped us. The side of that shed is shown here. See, the driveway comes up here and it's there. Oh, okay. Right okay. Up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I don't yeah. know what you use that for, Ralph. That's just storage. It's, uh, yeah. That was originally, that was there when I left it. Oh. Vintage. Vintage. That's a good word. <laughs> <laughs> when you say storage, what do you, what do you store? Equipment. I, just I have uh, all kinds of. That's the other thing I really need to get up there. I have a lot of equipment. So along those lines, to kind of segue into the next comment, I agree about the traffic analysis. I mean, it, it's, the chain is going to be minimal, but um, could you provide a narrative of the types of vehicles that you use that do go up there? I mean, it's primarily, you got pickup trucks, one time. front end loader. Yeah. It, there's, a, there's a truck that hauls, there's a mowing crew pickup truck, trailer, trailer. mow, and then there's a couple of one-ton dump trucks that uh, haul a piece of equipment to a job site, yeah. and they're back and forth, I mean, during the day, occasionally. Um, when they go out in the morning, they've been gone for the day. So the, um, the live machinery on site pretty much stays on site just to move around the mulch or your materials? Yes, but there is equipment that we take out of to job site. Also. Also. I don't know if we need any more detail than that. We can just have uh, itemized, you know, just to document. But <laughs> not to limit, we're not saying not to, not to limit the traffic or anything, just so that we know what's going on there. Mm -hmm. So no way to that wheel is driving in that driveway. Uh, no. Are you saying that you want to um, make a, uh, a narrative or a portion of the record in regard to creating an amount of use that would be allowed now for the expansion of use or just that we consider this issue? I, I think just to consider what it is that's going up there now, not to limit it and not to you know, provide a cap on it or anything like that, just so that we know what types of vehicles that are going to be used there. How do we put that into the record, or we we talk about using the photo log and using that record? How do we do that? I think we ask that the applicant and or his representative just to submit, you know, just a written log, or, or written just a list. You could ask yeah, an addition of approval that the applicant, you know, you not need me, submit a, a, a letter indicating that the vehicles and equipment presently used. I would confirm with Ralph what that is, send it in, and you check the mark off conditions in that. Yeah. That's what I suggest. We could, we could review it, Caroline and I, before we ask you to sign the plan. Caroline, you get a comment? Um, I just wanted to add that I think a narrative is a really good idea, but I would add employees to that and basic function of employees to somehow um, document the existing business, the function that's going on, and the extent to which it's going on, just because it hasn't been through this process just so that we can um, document what's going on right now. More broadly, <coughs> vehicles, but yeah. to include the vehicles. Yeah. Again, with the same caveat Tom adds that it's not intended to limit the employees. I mean, if Ralph right. gets so busy that he's got another two guys sitting in a pickup truck on his mowing crew, uh, <laughs> would, have, would prefer not to have to come in for a change in use plan because we've got two employees and two are not affecting the Well, I, I 
I agree with that in, in principle, but I wouldn't want to say it's a carte blanche either. At some point, you know, a non-conforming use expands. True. Yeah. So I, I don't know what the line is with that, but my intent in asking is just to document the current Yeah, I, use. in other matters I've delved into, I mean, our Supreme Court's even written about that. I mean, you are right to reasonably expand non-conforming use. At some point, across the line, it's changed use. You know, when you see that, that's why we have land use boards. Yeah, yeah just, just to clarify too as well, uh, similar to types of vehicles that you operate within your business, also if you're purchasing supplies, i.e. tractor trailers, the mulch, or flatbeds of fertilizer, um, all of the deliveries that you receive for wares for your business also are delivered in the same type of vehicles that you use in most of your day, being the dump trucks, the heavy dump trucks. Mm -hmm. um, and if, is there any fuel delivery or do you hear any vehicles coming with fuel that fuel your vehicles or no. fill any tank for fuel storage no. on site? No, there is a, uh, a small diesel tank that's like 50 gallons, um, but everything else there's, there's no gas, there's no fuel. Like a 50 gallon, just a, like a drum? Just a no, it's a specialized tank. With the tank? Uh, no, we're under that. You don't see it. It sort of loads the yeah, this the number the seven excavator, and I've got a backhoe up there, and yeah. tractors walk out. <coughs> and most of that is just a, there's one machine that stays on site. The rest of it, the rest of the machines are moving all the time. And they're fueled when they're out in the field. They yes, they fuel stop when they get yes. fueled. There's not fueled on site. No. Um, this occurred earlier. Is there any implications for the storage of salt in the well? Mm -hmm. the well? I'm aware it's a private well. I okay. don't believe so. Okay. Right. So, you have a um, so with that 50 gallon uh, tank for diesel, but it's not full, um, I guess, why do you have it? Um, to I mean, fuel up that machine that doesn't leave the site. That doesn't leave the site. No. Okay. In, in, you know, how do you fill that tank grill? We take it and put it on a dump truck. <laughs> bring it to the gas station. Take it to the gas station. Yeah. 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 Okay. So okay. okay. Permanently mounted on a, on a skid. Yeah. Yeah, I don't need to. No. May as well not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a good question. Um, Richard, any questions on this part of it? I know. Tom, I think you were going to segue to something else. Um, you mentioned utilities underground water. What about electrical? Yeah, underground. Okay. No, no, he, he will bring, I don't know, we should power, uh, you have a box, box on the ground box, right? Because the whole, our uh, church and ways are um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah. so, so, you know, in the course yeah. of the whole team, you want to bring that over to the structure here, and, and as well, line will also be on yeah. the ground. Yeah. Yeah. And um, are there any customers that come to your site? No. It's just you and your guys. Yeah. Right. So I, I was just wondering if there's any right requirement, maybe in the larger parking lot, but it's, it's The employees generally park in this area, mm -hmm. frankly, if they needed to be park on the road, they can park up in this small area and people park here. Yeah. I mean, there's so much area there. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think that's all I had. What? I, think I have one please. more comment. Oh. Um, I just wanted to throw up there, which is that you're referencing the subdivision of 2006. Um, the most recent Pima flood, flood plain map is 2015. Um, the brook that runs around that property is listed on that flood map, map that Tom's pulling out here. So I'm just concerned. Um, it's not clear that you are or are not encroaching on the 50 foot wetland setback from what might be a more accurate represent, uh, representation that of the wetlands? That brook's not on my property. Well, no. but, and so. It's always more than 50 feet. But. So, you know, maybe even if um, you can help 
So we, we were trying through our waiver. I mean, I was in October. I was going to ask that we not be obliged to show up. Then you know, as a way, uh, then then Adam uh, contacted civil consultants and they were able to marry up their plans with Coco and all that. And then he further married in his his uh, yeah. new contours to the subject. Side of driving in, church away the, you know, it's we sure the swale that we saw. That's that's all that zone A stuff. That, that's that's over here. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah, which is not even on the plan. Right. The wetland is shown on the plan. It's not part of this blue what's on area. Right. No. That, right. that wetland that works way over here somewhere. Yeah. But we just wanted to make sure there's a, kind of a high degree of confidence yeah. that the wetland delineation has not changed since. Street, but I own the other half of the property. The all fought one half of the property, and I bought the other half, my wife and I, from Mr. Chargy. And let me just say, Ralph has been there for about a dozen years. His activity has been going on there the whole time. There's never been a problem. His employees are pretty much the same people that have been there. I'm over there virtually every day moving my herd around. Um, I see them all the time. They come in in the morning, they come back late in the afternoon, but usually about six, seven o'clock sometimes in the summer. There's no noise factor. They're good neighbors, even the other people that I've talked to in the area. They're very much in favor of this. This has been his plan since the day he bought the place. Um, they're good neighbors. They keep the place nice and clean. They've never had a problem, and I'm a downhill for them, and I don't have a problem with anything. Anybody else like to comment from the public? Uh, yes, please. Hi. Name and address, please, for the record. Uh, Janet Megan, 457 Locust Street. Um, I agree. I'm not there as much as my husband, but he's always done a great job of keeping things quiet. I have no problem at all with the approval of the plan whatsoever. Great, great. Thank you very much. Anybody else for the public like to comment? All right. I'm going to close the uh, public hearing then. And I think at this point, I would entertain a motion to find the application complete. That would be nice if somebody wishes to do that. I would make that motion. Okay. Second. All right. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. All right. So 
So it's, it's found as a, as a complete. So now uh, we need to vote on whether or not to approve it. And um, I'm going to newer, less experienced chairman, I'm not a train to say, um, Tom, we need to, to address the waivers first individually or? Um, I think in this instance, it wouldn't be out of order to address them collectively. Okay. Because, I mean, I think that the conditions of the property and the use, um, they all seem, they, they make sense to me, those waivers, um, like a high intensity soil traffic lighting plan. I mean, they're really not conducive to this, to this project, I don't think. So I think if you did it collectively, it would be, would work for me. All right, and I'm going to follow up with a question as to, so we handle that separately from the issues about the salt and about the narrative about the... Yes, the, yes. Okay. yes the, waivers, the waivers are a separate subject. So I would entertain a motion to collectively um, vote on uh, approval of the waivers requested by the applicant. And that's the, do you have a, do you have a question? Well, um, there's, well, so before we do that, sure. um, one of those waiver requests is the building, and the building um, pertains to salt. So I, you know, um, well, t you know. I'm, I'm not sure that I'm okay with not including those buildings on the plan, oh. even though. So that is one of the waiver requests, and I just want to put that out there. I think I'm okay with the rest of the waiver requests, but that's, you know, up to the board to decide. So I just throw that out there as you want to deal with them collectively. Um, but I think that there's value in separate, particularly because of SALT, I think there's value in separating out um, that structure and, and requiring that structure be listed or shown on the plan. I just want to... So, uh, my next question will be then, Chris, how difficult would it be for the vote of the town or the board one way or the other to list or identify that structure on the plan? What would that be? It's not hard for Adam to, to add. It's, it's, it's kind of nailing me down. Yeah, right. <laughs> So, so I would just ask that that be phrased as a condition that the you know approved with the condition that the structure be shown you know if that's with salts to be shown that that, that be noted on our plan so that administratively John you know Carolyn and Tom can say yep it's on the plan it's okay to sign we ought to come back here for you know a subsequent board approval for that I think that's in the nature of it check off the box type of thing. I agree with that procedurally. Unless you grant the applicant's requested waiver as written in the letter, but for who had your, you know, the, the adding of that thing. Otherwise, I considered, you know, going through all these waivers piece by piece, and I thought, yeah, I'm going to give you a 30 page letter, you got to shoot me. And that's not a good way. So uh, I sort of hear the comments that collectively do that, and you can just excise from granting it that way any particular things you want to change. Make that clear. <coughs> to exclude the provision of existing structures. So then we would look for that plan to come in um, as a condition of approval. And if I, I, want to I, with this? I would be okay with it being a condition of approval. As Tom discussed it specifically, um, I would like to have for the clarification about the 2015 versus the 2006 flood plan. I would like to see something specifically state, you know, as a final condition of approval, not looking to hold anybody out, but also respect the, you know, the way that our, all of our zoning has been written, um, and uh, respecting that um, we've gone to various <coughs> I'm very happy to see that he's not looking to add any impervious paving or anything like that. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy for that. I'm grateful. Um, but I think I'd like to see a little blurb regarding that change from 2006 to 2015. Floodplain on that brook, um, specifically, you know, addressing that guaranteed 50 foot just, just, uh, setback that we're looking at. Um, but I can be flexible on the salt salt shed criteria to have it on the final plan before any sort of certificate of occupancy is issued. Yeah. You know, um, as 
long as it's written in, you know, you, you wouldn't just see a ball without that being addressed, but that allows you the comfort of proceeding with your plan. Mm -hmm. So, may I clarify my understanding of what you're saying? Because you're, you're talking about the 2015, 2006, those, those are the distinction of weapons. Um, well, like, well, we talk about just the, the, just the, um, flood the flood zone that, 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 that we yes. are, in fact, 50 feet away. Can Adam determine that? Or is that what you're looking for? Or? No. Be, or, yeah, or that's more what I'm looking at is when we drew up the, the flood. Because, yeah. because Tom, you're content from what Ralph's pointed out on the plan that was good enough with that, right? Do you want to see? Because I don't know what Adam would have to do to verify that. Um, and now I'm, and I guess if Tom's comfortable with it. Yeah, I, I, I can point it out. At the meeting, at the end of the meeting, okay. All right. Can you do it right now? Oh, right now? Because you, you have any see that. I would ask not that we, we try to delineate the distinction between the 2006 weapon and 15. Is the only way to do that? Maybe so. It's sort of so John a scroll there. It's a black band. Okay. You have a waiver of request. It's not on. Can you also make sure you're clear with that? Second? Sure, I'll second. All right. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. The ayes have it. All right. I believe the next issue is the issue about um, whether there should be, <coughs> as a condition of approval, a narrative about um, the number of vehicles, the types of vehicles going in and out of the property on a daily basis as well as the number of employees. Okay. And I would say a general description of business. And a general description of business. Would uh, someone like to make a motion on in regard to that? Just, just one quick question, kind of off track. Is there specific hours of business that you have? Um, I know they, they leave and they come back when the day's work is done, but, um, and you have no public Customers coming there at all, no. right? It's just simply. We start at 7 a.m. and they head out. We finish. We finish. It's, it's not really an end of the day type thing. Yeah. All right. So um, I guess I'm looking for someone to make a motion. I'll make a motion regarding the narrative uh, for the types and volume of vehicles, employees, and business owners. Point of clarification, because I'm going to write it tonight. Um, you're going to approve it. Um, Tom and I believe some members indicated that the intent of that narrative is not to limit or put a cap on the vehicles right. employed. That, so if that could be included in the language to make that clear, I'd appreciate it for him to you know, 
son when he discovered that. So that, yeah, I'd want to die, a summer guy. Someone not saying, hey, you, you can't have that. And it comes out there and counts. Right. <laughs> right, it's not a cap. It's just like yeah. the hours are not preventing yeah. the guy from get working late and coming in at nine. Yep. Yeah. It's not looking to be that stringent. So do we add to your language, Kevin's along the lines of, and Tom, please jump in, that it's not intended to be a limit, but to establish a baseline or something like that, or average use of diamond it's summary? Average, just, just a matter of, you know, a summary of the current use. Okay. All right. So is there a second? Yes. All, right. All, right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, the ayes have it. All right. Before we do an up and down vote on the plan as it stands. Anything else we need to go on? No? I don't think so. I mean, we, we are clear on what the conditions of approval are so that we we'll know what to look for when Chris or Ralph comes back. Is Sarah for the record? Is there? No. <laughs> Like that once again, just so right, for Sarah's record, that she's clear. So we take the existing buildings on the site plan with a note of the use of the salt shed. Right. We, we, um, we included that in the motion to grant the waiver for the design standard. Um, I think we excluded that. Excluded from that from the waiver request. Okay. So and not included in that waiver. Sure. as a conditional approval? There are none. There are now. There are none? There are none. We, are went, to a, we went to a, a class of this. The, the state's so far behind on this. They're trying to catch up, but they're, they're really having a tough time. And there, are, there are no standards. I mean, you look, look around. So there may not be standards now, which obviously would be no prejudice to you. Let's say there's some, and that's the topic, in that in the future. If, if the state adopts something that's going to be applicable, then it will be applicable here as well. But, uh, and we can research that in the RSA. I am personally not aware of it, but. No, what, what no, we, no, I just don't know. Yeah, what was, when you brought it up about the uh, stormwater runoff, it was in connection with that? Well, it is, part, it is, I'm sure, about runoff, but yeah. salt has to be housed. So I don't know that that's a municipal mm -hmm. regulation only for our own operations or if that really pertains to development and, and monitoring public, you know, uh, private yeah. use of salt, whether or not the state covers that or we cover that. But um, I'm not sure who the, um, the officiating entity, I guess, is what I'm trying but um, it's a big deal, so I, I, I just want to make sure that we are not approving that until we are making sure that we are doing what we need to be doing about that, because we do have planning regulations. We are required to have planning re regulations, and I've changed our planning regulations so that they are stormwater compliant. And part of that is about managing new development to make sure that it stays in compliance with our evolving permit. And so I would want to make sure that we are staying compliant in our part of this project, managing and approving and inspecting the project. Um, that's about as much as I can say offhand. I haven't looked up our regs to say what it says about so, private salt storage. So instead of quoting any regs that may or may not exist, if we just said that the salt, as a condition of approval, the salt had to be housed to prevent runoff. And then we'll otherwise follow any other state regulations regarding salt if, storage. If we find any. Well, should, should they arise, like, you know, he's going to be, you know, required to be compliant with any future regulations, yeah. I guess I would but say. But I, I can see that happening. If the state adopts something, 
they send out notification to municipalities and then it would be up to the local enforcing agency to say to Ralph, this just happened, so you have to do this. And I think you'd have to, right? I mean, you think well, right. No, I'm, yeah, 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 yeah. But that would apply to any business. Right, right. right. I mean, that's a given. That's a, it's just going to be a standard that everyone would have yeah. to abide by if it's state mandated. Mm -hmm. be, be no different than that's true. anybody. So it's probably not necessary. So, I mean, there's no prejudice, but so like everybody's going to have to abide by yeah. So right. I, I think so we just... Inside that building, one of the areas okay. of asphalt is for the salt. So there is like a list of things that they say should happen. Recycling. So what regulation is that we're looking at? It's a, it's a, it's an environmental fact sheet from the DES. It's not a regulation, I don't believe, yet. Yeah, I don't think it is. It's not required. Is it best practice fact sheet? Yep. I, you know. But it meets that anyway, you're saying. Pardon? It, it meets that anyway. It's yeah. on. I mean, well, it meets that so one, that one item of this three or four page fact sheet. Oh, three or four. Okay. I think it's worth checking our regulations to make sure that we are staying compliant with our stormwater permit with regard to what we are requiring applicants. So okay, so I, I you know I hadn't thought of that. I think it's a pretty manageable condition of approval also because I mean none of this stuff is gonna none of this stuff is gonna be official until Chairman signs it. So if that was a condition of approval, we could do the research um, and if there's something <coughs> else that was necessary, we could certainly have Ralph and Chris submit it. On the salt storage. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Or if, if the condition was as generic as complying with the regulation, that's got to be complied with anyway. You right. Then, right. Then we're just talking about filling in the factual knowledge of what is the regulation you have to do instead of spelling it out, which is what we don't have. None of us have our arms around what that is right, right now. So do you, do you mind? I mean, the, the commissioner could have generically just saying you got to comply with what yeah. the law is. You've got to comply with it anyway. Yeah, that point. So, I mean, I'm, we wouldn't object to that condition, and we'll figure out what it is. Meanwhile, the wooden storage structure in this corner that Adam's going to add to it, yeah. it has an asphalt base now. Yes. Adam can yeah. note that on the plan, yeah. and we'll say salt, salt storage, salt storage arrow, yeah. will be on the plan. Yeah. That's what I intend to tell them. That would be right. So, that sounds, that sounds good. Tell me how the, what's your. <coughs> about the, uh, I guess the language we were voting on? Um, that the applicant provides sufficient information to include building location on the plan um, to confirm compliance with applicable salt storage and stormwater regulations. Uh, yes. Salt storage and stormwater. I think we should put a applicable in there just to make sure. Yes, agreed. That's fine. fine. And Sarah, if you can make a note of whatever that was, I'd like to review it. Absolutely. Thank you. Or maybe you could send everybody a link. Thank you. All right, well, I would certainly entertain a motion. So let me just confirm. So um, the conditions of approval of which there are three is the depiction of salt structures that is indication of use on the site plan, the narrative types of vehicles. Did, did, you, you, did you say, what would you, could you repeat? The one? Depiction of, of the salt storage structures. Okay, so plural or singular? Singular, there's no S. Oh, there's only one. I've shown one, one, and you say S, you're going to say where's the other, and we're going to say there is none, so 
what's not happening at Sunnyvale. Where the invitation is used, narrative of types of vehicles and compliance with all applicable self storage and storm water regulations. Go back to the narrative. The narrative is about of types of vehicles. Vehicles, employees. Like employees, and general statement of business. Okay. Okay. business That's type right. of business. Everything that was included in that other motion that you did no, it's just previously? General description of business is what you said. And I would request that you add your value being the intention to limit vehicles and employees. Yeah, don't worry about that. I think that's <laughs> my job is here. That's why he has me sitting with the <laughs> right hand side of okay. the person. <laughs> if, if you would be willing to. So, so the condition was basically what this motion was that you passed about to add to the application and narrative of types of vehicles, number of employees, description. Okay. That's not with the intention. So I guess if that motion with those conditions has already been approved, then this is just one additional condition to be sure that the but salt. But it's, it's, it's a reiteration of the same thing. Well, it doesn't. So no, I, I guess we did approve all those conditions. So there's just one additional condition. Uh, I, I didn't realize we keep track of them. So <laughs> okay. So, so that's good then. Yes. Right. It is. What, yeah. So then, I think we still need one more motion for the assurance that the salt storage meets all state and stormwater, and I thought that was the third word, state stormwater regulation state, something applicable state. Applicable salt storage and stormwater water So are you doing yeah. that as a motion on its own, or as a condition of approval? It's an added condition of approval. So Over. we're making an addition, I am making an additional motion that we um, approve this additional condition of approval. I don't think we need an extra Well, you can as far as the record goes, but so, you know, you know, we need to vote on it, so it needs to be a motion to my mind. So I move it. I understand you're going to approve with four stated conditions of approval. As a single structure, you know, we use the salt storage narrative on embellished. Compliance with all applicable salt storage and stormwater regulations. Yep. And what, what did you just say is the fourth? The Joe's going to look up the town wetland and put all the stormwater. Yes, we will inform you of okay. what that means. Yeah, thank you. I guess just three add, add the structure, narrative, and yes. you know, complying with applicable salt storage and stormwater. Motion. Second. Second. Right. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. All right, so I believe at this point we have a motion to approve the proposed site plan with all um, information waivers, waivers and <laughs> conditions of approval. Okay. And I will make that motion. Right. Okay. Second. Second. Right. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? The ayes have it. Congratulations. Thank you. Moving forward. Yes. So that's it. <laughs> that matters. Yeah, I'm sure. You could have brought it to me. Oh, yeah, you could have brought it to me. But I'm going to call you. I'll be in trucks. I'll be in trucks. Right there. Thank you. Yeah. What are you talking about? Good. Good to see you. Good to see you. I just, my son just reminded me that we uh, took a class. We're, we're certified salt applicators and stewards um, by the state. Yeah, we took maybe two years ago, so we both took the class. 
that certified. So, I just, good job. Yeah. So we. That's a nice one. Great. Right. Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, Conversation off. This is from the um, Dover. City of Dover mm -hmm. website, which I'm not um, suggesting necessarily that we um, we imitate. But I did some some minimal research today, uh, given my schedule, and uh, just by way of background, uh, City of Lebanon has impact fees. Hampton has impact fees. Rochester via an article in a newspaper that I won't quote by name because uh, like copyright issues. Rochester is considering impact fees. Uh, New Durham has impact fees. Um, New Durham. And Durham. And New Durham. And Durham, yes. Um, and anyway, so why don't we just look at, and I'm going to spend five minutes tops on this. Why do we need impact fees? Uh, the city felt impact fees were a way to mitigate unintended consequences of growth. Fees are meant to pay for the impacts to capital facilities caused by development. The enabling legislation also requires that the fees only be used for the purposes for which they are calculated. And um, let's jump to when is the fee assessed? All impact fees shall be assessed prior to as a, or as a condition for the issuance of a building permit or other appropriate permission to proceed with development as determined by the building inspector. Um, and waivers are possible. So anyways, if we look at this, we can see sort of what um, Dover is charging for various uh, types of development. Um, Just by the way, so um, let me just jump around as I'm asking your answering your question here. So, um, <coughs> you see, see, Dover's got it laid out per housing type of unit, and then uh, Lebanon, which you folks don't have because I ran out of time to make copies, and I won't bore you with. But, Rock, uh, for instance, Lebanon, and if we go further down this route, I'll, I'll, I'll give more copies. Has. Uh, impact fees, fees per square foot. And so for a single family residence, they have 95 cents per school, 63 for recreation, 23 for police fire, 21 cents for fire department, et cetera, than all other housing units. And I'm just gonna go back to, jump around to Rochester as a, an article May 22nd was going to do by comparison for a single family home at $1.87 per square foot, for schools, which is considerably higher, uh, 
few cents for police, 57 cents for, for fire, um, and 32 cents for municipal officers. Um, I just had some questions. Sure. How, how do they arrive at the um, calculation to come up with these figures? How, how does anybody do that? I well, mean, these, these are guidelines. I understand that very well. You know, these are just guidelines. But it's, you know, to me, like throwing darts. I think, as I encouraged before, if we read in our zoning ordinance, it talks about the authority and applicability and, and the work that we have to do to get to this point. Because they're not guidelines, they're absolute rules. You have to be able to justify yes. these numbers. So, so we have to. We're going to have to come up with something. Yeah. Right. As, right. As the board here to say, okay, this this is how we decided to come up with this. That's a big deal. Well, and it is, and I'm and I'm, and again, that's why I said that I'm going to stick our toe in it because the more I looked at it, it is um, considerable. And but I, I don't want to be the uh, what's the old adage about you know the they lay down the short. I think they can help. Before we go on, I think that we need to look into the future. And, you know, this is something that's going to take some time. Yes. But I, I see where John's going with it is that it's sort of on the bandwagon we may want to get, on, get on, uh, ahead of it, get ahead of it, so to speak. Um, but there is quite a bit of administrative work, obviously, um, involved. But I, I don't think it's a waste of time by any means. Oh, I don't either. I'm just I'm, I'm thinking of the, the, the various uh, departments, the, the school, the police department, the, the town, Whatever department has to be kind of like fully engaged here to, to come up with some kind well, of... Well, maybe not. Maybe it's something about just taking their gross annual budget and, and, you know, the statistic of, for example, how often do fire, you know, do fires, um, the, does the fire department um, respond to a, a single detached versus townhouse, you know, break it down. And then, you, you, so you look at their gross annual budget and then you look at their capital assets and how much, you know. But they're going to have that information. Them. We don't have it. Well, sure, we, you know, we, we have access to that. Okay. We can, and we would have to look at that and provide access to all that. But so, so it's the amount of use of each of those things. So a police, you know, replacing police cruisers and, um, and, and the officers for how much they respond to those kinds of units, how much would the impact be of an additional unit, whether it be a single family dwelling or an apartment building or what have you. So you have to kind of take the whole impact of the whole budget, I guess, and divide it by existing structures maybe and figure out what um, what the impact for an, an additional structure would be. I guess it depends on the, the Right. I, um, we would have to do some research to find out. There are probably laws about how you Oh yeah, cool. Six seventy four twenty one. But it's not just it's, it is, it's yeah. not just residential. It's it's other uses as well, non residential. Oh yes, yeah. right. businesses. I mean, yes. What type of business? Yeah. It, you know, right. it's, yeah. it's, it's quite involved. Well, right. It's tough when you have a you know, volunteer board. And the town can it's tired after. You know, <laughs> we can just say we'll do impact fee, impact fees for education, police, fire, recreation, but it allows us to do water treatment, distribution facilities, wastewater treatment, public road system rights, I mean it's... And for those reasons, or something that we almost have to do a due diligence to look into as expansion happens within yeah. our town, I mean, that's inevitable. Yeah. And the other side, too, the management, you know, that this is, someone's going to be responsible Absolutely. for where this money goes, how right. it's tracked, what it's spent on, if it, it's returned, if it's not, and we had had discussions on this. Mm -hmm. that yeah. You have to use it for the next period of time. That's really use specific. Yeah. It's. <clears throat> How do you see that playing out, Caroline, from your position? Keeping track of it. Um, we have to create systems that we don't have. So I don't think we have to reinvent the wheel. There are plenty of other communities that do this, but we need to talk to them about how they do it and how well it works, mm -hmm. and trying to adopt and maybe adopt and modify those systems. Um, you know, um, operating a system that exists is a lot less work than the creation of a system. Um, and, and, and learning new things and, and creating and learning new processes. Um, so it will take time. 
because you have to calculate this, you know, it, it's one thing to, you know, um, import somebody else's spreadsheet that you can put your own numbers in, but you still have to come up with these numbers, and then you have to, the numbers, the other thing is, the numbers would change potentially annually or every five years or upon some kind of statutory requirement, I'm sure. Yes. So, you know, once you're committed to doing it, you have to stay on top of it. Um, but I do agree that it's an important thing to consider because we have huge swaths of land that will impact us greatly should they be developed um, all at once. Because right now there's current infrastructure, and if we have no offsetting funds to help, it comes right back into the plastics. So I, I agree it is important to figure out what we do. But it's huge. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. very huge. Because we're, we're barely functional, like in, in some in well, some ways, I, you know. I <laughs> um, well, well, what I mean is, like, for example, you all saw the application for tonight, this afternoon, um, and that's because we still don't have a good process for making sure that, you know, that the planning consultants get all the copies of what, and are they paper, are they not paper, what do our applications look like, do, you know, are applicants really clear on the deadlines and what the fee structure is and what the checklist is, like, you know, we've got a lot of other work to do that, you know, the office, you know, Purely from a staffing standpoint, that's well, why these, these Dovers and these Nash, I mean, these <coughs> right, they, have bigger, they have bigger resources, resources to do that. Right. more people. Um, that was my question to Carol. How does she see it from her point of view? But to you know, workloads are already exactly. You know, exactly. never ending as it is. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to go back to Kevin's question. By the way, the town of Chester also has impact fees. I think Chester's a smaller size yeah. town. Um, New Durham. So New Durham, which I'm not sure what the, I saw it somewhere the population, but I didn't print off the whole thing. They're very thing. similar to us. Okay. So, so, and again, what I think, I guess we're out of time, what I think I might do is start trying to pull out some of these um, various towns and put them on a, a single document to look at, but, you know, there, it, uh, you can, but, but, but we can, so, <coughs> for instance, for, for New Durham, they, so they break it down elementary, middle school, and, and uh, high school, but uh, no kid, but no, but no police by, uh, right. But they have a single family detached. They have the elementary is $2,002. Middle and high school is $2,417. Uh, and they have different amounts based on. So that would mean they would have to know who the people are that are moving into these homes. Charge them whether it's an elementary or high school. Right, you're doing like a, a census Ooh. survey when you when you yeah. come in to fill up a building permit. That's Ooh. intrusive. Yeah, it is. And I'm just, not sure that's legal. Well, isn't isn't the fee like X goes to the grade school, X goes to the middle school, X goes to the high school? But how do you decide if you're going to yeah. charge that? Unless yeah. it's number of bedrooms. If it's a three bedroom, mm -hmm. then you can charge two toward the school. But which are you picking? Well, like, like <laughs> in Dover. All these categories, you pay everything. Right. They, you don't not pay this because you don't pay this. Right, but when you're paying school, school is so general. Like, school. What I'm saying is, like, I think that they pay all three of those. Mm -hmm. But you okay. don't have to say, like, I don't have a grade school or I don't have a middle school. Or right. You pay sure. all of those it's because sure. it, it's the overall impact. Potential. Right. Oh, let me tell you. Yes. <laughs> Sarah has personal experience. And I know this would be hard work, and you know, I'm not suggesting that my idea should be followed through, but I'm worried about if we don't do something. I appreciate your work. We're, we're just going to um, more and more coming across that thing. So um, I agree with you. My concern is that um, the change in the office, the change in how administration happens in this town is still pretty new. And we have, as far as I'm concerned, we've not replaced the number of hours that select board members used to provide the town. So even though we have a 20 hour bookkeeper administrative assistant, um, we are, and, and I am full time, but we are not providing the same number of hours of work in the office that we once enjoyed by volunteers, select board members who did operations in town. 
you know, on a consistent basis. Um, and so now you have a select board that's full time. So um, we're not quite where we need to be. I proposed to the select board a five hour increase in um, that administrative position and they um, brought forth two and a half hour increase to meet the budget committee. And I'm grateful for that, but you know, they have to balance all the requests and all the needs of the town. Um, even at that, there were a couple of comments about it at the budget public hearing. The town is, I think, still not really um, understanding what's happened in the office and what the current state is, what the needs are, and what where the office is trying to get outside of this conversation. And yet, I fully, I'm, I'm on board with you, and I'm fully with you that this is really important, and I'd like to see this happen. I guess what I'm trying to say is, the public needs to see the value of it, and the public needs to support it by providing the staff that can make it happen. Because um, it's it's not just the creating it; it's you know the implementation and the maintenance of it is going to be um, not insignificant. So. At this point, with what's allowed, I, I just can't even imagine it. It's, it's not it's not possible. I mean, I hate to say that, uh, but you know, with current staffing standards and what's allowed for money to be spent on certain things, and the town has to approve it, obviously, that, you know, anytime anything budgetary, that's a mountain. So I think it hinges on when we ought to do public outreach and talk about the need and the risk and the value. So well, to the town, for all the town. But I see the value of it. I see the value of it. Yeah. Clearly, with more and more coming on. You know, I, I see this process, even if we were all today to say, yeah, great, taking months. I mean, it's going to be. And we would have, just because we're exploring it doesn't mean it's going to happen. The other thing that I'd be happy to do is call up, you know, uh, someone in, in the city of Dover, just, and that may not be the best place to call, but. Uh, Say how many hours do you does someone in the city of Dover, mm -hmm. a much larger town, spend administering these kind of monies? And if you prorate that or for population, then maybe you can break it down into what the impact here would be. It might be more direct to talk about, um, you know, New Durham and and um, I think Tamworth's our size. You know, the, the and and see if they can what they have for administrative staff and how much. Um, if they do it, it would be, I guess what I'm saying is, it would be really interesting to see, I'm kind of processing out loud, it would be interesting to see, of the towns our size, who else does this? And how many hours of administrative staff do they have in their budget? So that, you know, and not that all of any extra staff is all about, you know, impact fees for sure. Um, but they might be able to say how long they do. Yes, I how long they've been doing. You know, it's just something the Durham's done so long ago that it just it runs itself at this point in time. Or it, it does, I think, make sense to check the towns of similar size. Because Dover, for instance, we collect the fees. The planning department collects the fees and then gives them to the finance department. I don't know what they go after that. I mean, we the planning board collects it. You, did you say the planning? No, the planning department. The planning planning office. Yeah. When we issue a building fees. permit, yes, oh yeah, we have an invoice that goes with the permit application, and then the fee has to be paid, and then um, the office administrative assistants just bring it to the finance department, and they're the ones who do the depositing and keep track of the separate accounts, well, I can see that. disbursement. And <coughs> is this mandatory? I mean, is this going to become a mandatory thing? Is no. that question? No, it, this is. So this is our ordinance already. Well, hold the phone, though. If we adopt it and oh, create it, then it's, it's mandatory, and then it's everybody. It's all it's the right. The state's not requiring that we... Okay, no, so this, this is not something that is generally required. It's Correct. That we can institute ourselves. Well, yes, we're, but once you do it, you do it across the board yeah, first. Yeah, yeah. And I have some fiscal impact to the town on any side of development. It's a user fee, kind of. It is, exactly. Yeah. But that's different when you're talking about a town that has a finance office, a, a planning yeah. office, you know, right. both those offices are staffed and assistants and, <laughs> I mean, yes, but if you, if you, if you, you know, Durham or, <laughs> what 
But just, just to indicate how far back these go, so Durham's goes back to 2005. It's a long time ago. The Durham's it says here the 2009 impact fee basis, which seems to me to indicate it may have been in existence before 2009, but at least as far back as 2009, which is 10 years ago. I mean, they, they got it going. They made it. <coughs> and New Durham was, Durham was a, you know, less developed New Durham, area. Durham. Well, so I'm talking about both. Durham, 2005 to 2006. New Durham, 2009. So. And New Durham's probably a small board like us. <laughs> playing board that made it happen. They just need to see what they have for resources and mm -hmm. office wise. And I can, I'm happy to call some of these smaller towns and see if I can get some questions. Like, that's, I think, some good target town to, to have discussions with. Because they, they put it together. <laughs> I'm wondering. All right, well, thanks for entertaining me on that tonight. Thank you for your work. That's really awesome. Well, it's a very, very, very small step for a very big project. <laughs> yeah, it's so, really can you talk about what's going to be seen going on? Uh, no, <laughs> that's, we'll work, I'll work on that throughout the year, but that's, uh, we're running, we've all been an hour and a half, I appreciate everyone's time, any, any other motions? Oh, okay. It's a motion to adjourn. Uh, second? second. All right, I'll do a aye. Aye. Okay, thank you everyone, thank you very much. I appreciate it.